Sean was distraught. He paced at the back door, whimpering, tail wagging, his eyes wet and swollen. He and Tyler hadn't spent longer than an hour away from each other since birth, and now Tyler had been gone for a whole night. The man and the boy had been out looking for him, but Sean knew they weren't going to find him. He couldn't pick up his scent. He was far away. Tyler always wanted to escape. He was happy, but never truly settled. The brothers loved their family, truly. The man and the woman always had cuddles at night and fed them their favorite meats, took them on lots of long walks. And the boy seemed like a dog just like them, a slightly less furry border collie. But Tyler always wanted to escape. He never trusted their new people. Because of their old people. They were not nice. And that had stayed with Tyler. Sean never understood it. He liked the routine. It has been years now. This was their family. This was their life. But his brother's scent was gone, and Sean's heart was broken. Now the woman cried too as she tried to comfort Sean at the back door. The man shouted and worried. The boy just stood outside calling for Tyler. Everything felt bad and incomplete. He needed his scent. Rain was falling at the back door, and Sean had started falling asleep with the boy, sat stroking him when a figure started striding through the rainfall in the back garden. Sean looked up and immediately recognized the outline as it appeared at the back door. It was Tyler. He was back. But something was wrong. He watched Tyler calmly sit at the back door, soaking wet, and stared through the window of the door. He just sat there. Sean wagged his tail and barked, but he still felt weird. He was worried about his brother. Why was he acting so strange? The boy opened the door and Sean ran out into the rain, sniffing and licking Tyler. But Tyler didn't react, and Sean realized that was what was wrong. Tyler had no scent. He didn't smell like a different dog. He didn't smell of... anything. He had no scent. That night was strange. Everyone was happy and excited, and showering both dogs with attention and love, and spoiling them with pig ear treats and all their favorite things. But Sean could tell Tyler wasn't right. He wasn't excited. He didn't wag his tail. He ate. He drank. He sniffed. He endured his strokes. But he was... not there. Sean couldn't feel his brother's presence back in the house. Sean could smell the moss and dirt and grass and rainwater matted into Tyler's fur. He could smell the road and the woodland. But he couldn't smell Tyler. The man and the woman and the boy went to bed, and all the lights were turned out. Sean went to his bed and waited for Tyler to go to him beside him. But he didn't. He sat upright in the middle of the kitchen floor, staring at him. Sean whimpered, worried and confused and sad. He just wanted Tyler back. This wasn't Tyler. It looked like Tyler. Exactly like Tyler. But the scent wasn't there. Or the soul. All night. He watched Sean. Sat there. He didn't even blink. The man and the woman and the boy woke up early to take Sean and Tyler for a walk, and Sean was so happy to not be on his own with Tyler anymore. He ran and wagged and knocked over the kitchen chair while the man put on his leash. Tyler sat calmly while the woman put on his. Sean could tell the woman felt uneasy about how Tyler was behaving. But they carried on, and all five of them headed out to the field by the woods. Just like that, as he dragged the man along on his leash, all Sean's fears and worries disappeared. The smell of the moss and the insects and the birds and the rabbits filling his nostrils so close he could taste them. They reached the field and let them both off their leash. Nobody else around on the huge field, only the sounds of the distant motorway. Sean ran around in the low hovering fog, chasing early morning butterflies and barking at rabbits as they vanished into burrows. But Tyler didn't move. Even released from his leash, he stayed by the family's side, just watching. The boy found a great stick and threw it low and far, Sean chasing it eagerly across the moss, grabbing it and fetching it straight back to the boy. He glanced at Tyler. 
He showed no interest. He always played. He still had no scent. But Sean was happy because the boy was happy. When he smiled, Sean smiled. When he played, Sean played. And so he kept fetching that stick, getting faster every time. The boy threw hard and the stick went into the woods. Sean loved this part, as the smells in the woods were the most exciting. He ran into the tree line and sniffed through anthills and weeds and rabbit poop and other scents that he didn't know but loved. He found an unmarked tree and had to claim it. Then he found the stick, grabbed it, and headed back, led by the scent of the boy. As he trotted through weeds and marsh and wet tree bark, Sean suddenly froze. Something had changed. He couldn't smell the boy anymore. Couldn't pick up his scent. He searched and sniffed and whimpered and lost all sense of direction. Where had they gone? Had they left him? Why would they do that? Sean ran, straight ahead, recognizing the scent of the fog-shrouded moss and long grass of the rabbit holes on the field. He ran and ran, hoping to eventually catch his people's scent. Sean reached the field. He looked around, the fog thicker and higher now, and the field seemingly even more deserted. There was no people's scent, no Tyler scent. Sean whimpered, feeling left behind, abandoned, alone, until he saw an outline in the fog that he felt like he recognized. He dashed towards it and felt incredible as he saw the man, the woman, and the boy all stood in the low hovering fog, all with Tyler sat beside them. Sean stopped. Something again was just... wrong. He was only a few yards from his people, but they weren't right. They all just stared at him. Nobody came to stroke him. Nobody smiled. Nobody made a sound. They all just stood there with that blank expression, just like Tyler, staring at Sean. And they had no scent.